So by modularizing our code base with these local libraries, we already got a much stronger boundary between these features. And so if we properly separate our applications based on their domain area or business context, this should give us a much nicer isolation and help with maintainability. So compared to folders, this is already much stronger. However, nothing prevents me from really importing from any other libraries Granted, they re-export the components that I want to import. And this could sometimes even happen accidentally because VS Code just auto-completes some import based on some util function that multiple workspace products might have. So for this exact purpose, NX introduces a concept of so-called boundary rules, and they are implemented as lint rules such that you can define which of these projects can depend on which other projects. So how you define these boundary rules really is up to you and NX is really flexible such that you can add your own system. Now what has proven to work well is by adding kind of like two dimensions. The first being which type of project can depend on which other type of project. So a project type is basically a library that is of type feature implementing an entire use case or a library being of type UI because it hosts maybe order components that are being used in these feature libraries for our order use case flows. It can also be a shared library, let's say our design system that is shared across multiple of these projects. And the second dimension is usually the scope of the project. So whether this belongs to the orders domain or the products domain, or whether this is of scope shared such that it can be reused across multiple projects. Now to classify these projects, NX has a mechanism of tags. So if we go, for instance, here into our modules orders file here and open up the project JSON, there is a tags array that you can specify. And these are really arbitrary strings. So again, we can now represent these two dimensions. We can say this is of type feature and of scope order. Again, these are just strings that you can define. You don't even have to use a colon, but you could use a dash or something else that works better for you. Similarly, we can go to our products project JSON and add here that this is of type feature and of scope products. And our shared UI library would be of type UI and scope shared. So this is a classic example of a library that is potentially usable within all the various projects that we have. So now that we have classified these products, we can define the actual rules. And this is done at the root level ESLint file here in this ESLint RC based JSON. So there you can already see there is a rule defined for this module boundary ESLint rules that comes with NX. And so we can add here further rules. First of all, let's specify that the source tag of type feature can only depend on libraries that also have type feature, or we want also to have the type UI be able to be imported in a feature library. So these, as you can imagine, are the top level user flow implementation libraries. So they depend on potentially a lot of those other types of libraries. For instance, if you would have another library of data access for data fetching or some logic libraries or UTL libraries, you might also want to allow a feature library to depend on this. Contrary though, for instance, if we define the type dimension for our UI library, we might want that a UI library can depend on another UI library, of course, but we might not want to it be able to depend on a feature library because the relationship should be rather vice versa. So the UI libraries tend to be more at the leaf side of our project graph tree. So now that we have defined the type dimension, we can go ahead and define potentially our scope dimension. So we can say here of scope orders, should be able to depend obviously on other scope orders libraries. It should potentially also be allowed to depend on scope products because maybe the orders library need to, needs to import the product lists to visualize in the recent orders that you have taken. But the products might not necessarily need to be able to depend on the orders. Now again, these are just constraints that we impose here in this demo tutorial. And what we also want to have is probably that it can depend on scope shared because maybe we want obviously that type of scope to depend on shared UI design components. And similarly, we can also define the one for our products. And so for products, we would want it to only be able to depend on products because we don't have any further domains here. And finally, there's the leaf node here, which is our scope shared, which should only really be able to depend on scope shared. And so once you have these rules in place, let's test them. Let's go to our products component library and try to import orders, which in theory should be prevented by this rule. 
And so if I go to my product component, and this again lives here in this products library, and I try to import here the orders component, you can already see these squiggly lines. And if I hover here, you can see that it indicates that a project tag with scope products can only depend on libs tag with scope products or scope shared. And so this is really nice if you have the linting extension installed, so you get it right away when you import a component. Obviously on CI, this would block you as well because you might potentially run a command that runs linting. For instance, I can do run many dash T lint. This would run linting for all the different projects here. And for one of the five targets, it's failed, which is specifically the import that we did here in our products component library.